This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. The World Health Organization has declared Africa wild polio free. The last recorded case was in Nigeria in 2016 and follows a decades-long battle to eradicate the disease. Polio, a disease that mainly affects children under the age of five, causing irreversible paralysis and in some cases death, is now only endemic in Afghanistan and Pakistan. In 1996, polio paralyzed more than 75,000 children across the continent. However, since 1996, billions of oral polio vaccines have been provided, saving an estimated 1.8 million children from the disease, and more than 95% of Africa's population has now been immunized. This week on Talk Africa, we will explore the journey that led to this success. I'm Beatrice Marshall. Welcome to Talk Africa. Now, Nigeria is the last African country to have been declared free from wild polio, with the last case reported four years ago. The country has come a long way, having accounted for more than half of all global cases less than a decade ago. CGTN's Deji Badmos brings us more. 35-year-old Esther Marquay is a polio survivor. The Nigerian entrepreneur was infected with the virus at age two. People were afraid of coming close to me. And the stigma and uh, it was so much on me that I had to run. Initially, I was like blaming my mom because I asked her a lot of questions. And she told me actually there was a vaccine she missed. Makop Masok, another polio survivor, has a similar experience. He says his childhood was a very difficult one. You know, there's what is called the POS, uh, polio trauma, that a lot of people don't know. Sometimes in the night you feel pains. Everybody is enjoying his rest. Here you are just feeling pains pains in your joints. Their stories are a reminder of the debilitating effects of poliomyelitis. Less than a decade ago, the country accounted for more than half of global polio cases. Just think about in 1996, almost 75,000 children were paralyzed in Africa. Um, so now there is no polio case. There is no paralysis due to polio. So th this has been a um, historic um, pathway. You see how many disability you reversed and also we did not count the polio related mortality so we saved lives so you see that has a direct impact to the economy nigeria reported its last case of polio in 2016 the who has now certified the country and the continent free of the virus and for polio survivors like esther and makop this means a lot if only this was done earlier I think I wouldn't have been affected. And I'm very happy that the children I will bring on earth, nothing like polio. It's even my prayer that it will be sustained, it will be permanent, that no child in Nigeria, Africa, or even the world will be infected with polio any longer. But experts say much still needs to be done to ensure Africa stays free of the wild polio virus. Nigeria is having very high number of unimmunized children. So we need to ensure those immunized children are immunized through the routine immunization system. And building that system, that also builds the backbone for primary healthcare system. And that will be the, you know, measured challenge ahead of us. While Africa is celebrating this health milestone, the world is not rid of the wild polio virus yet, as Pakistan and Afghanistan are still battling with the virus. The WHO estimates that the eradication of polio across the world would save at least 40 billion US dollars, which can then be diverted to other public health initiatives. Deji Badmos, CGTN, Lagos, Nigeria.
And now to discuss this, let's bring in our panel of guests. In Lagos, Nigeria, Dr. Tunji Funzo, the chair for the National Polio Plus Committee of Rotary International. And joining us from Congo, Brazzaville via Skype is Dr. Pascal Mukanda, the World Health Organization Polio Eradication Program Coordinator for the African region. Thank you both for joining us on the program. Dr. Pascal Nkanda, this is a momentous time uh, for Africa. The Independent Africa Regional Certification Commission for Polio Eradication has declared Africa free of wild polio. First, clarify what this means for us though. When we say eradicated polio, does this declaration mean Africa is polio free? Yes, so what we mean is that the wild type of polio virus uh, has been gotten rid in Africa. We don't have it anymore, and it's not paralyzed future generations anymore. So that means they are stopping the transmission uh, of this wild polio uh, virus. Um, this is very good news because children will not be again uh, in future uh, be infected or paralyzed by this wild polio virus. Uh, but there are also other uh, types of uh, uh, polioviruses, like what we call the circulating vaccine derived uh, polioviruses. So, when, when we talk about this being uh, one of the greatest achievements in public health history, because we're now talking about 95% of Africa's population now being uh, immunized, how great an achievement is this in terms of eradication of wild polio? And what exactly does this mean for the continent? So this is indeed a very historical achievement. As you may be aware, the last time a, a virus uh, was eradicated uh, from the African continent uh, was smallpox uh, 40 years ago. So it's taken us quite a long time, a long journey, uh, for us to make white polyvirus, the second, the only second uh, virus which affects human beings uh, to be getting rid of. This is extremely uh, important achievement. Uh, because already when you started this uh, eradication efforts up to now, we have already stopped 1.8 million children from being paralyzed by a wild polyvirus. We have also uh, stopped close to 180,000 uh, children who have died from this, well, uh, not died uh, because we've been doing this vaccination uh, campaign to get rid of this wild polyvirus. So quite a big achievement and quite a lot of important milestones in terms of public health. Let's get the re reaction from Nigeria because um, uh, Dr. Tunji Funzo, Nigeria is the last African country to be declared uh, uh, polio, wild uh, polio virus free. I mean, the vaccination campaign there faced a lot of challenges, uh, particularly in the northeast of the country. Take us through how you overcame uh, those challenges. Well, we, we, we are in a very momentous, you know, uh, period because like... Uh, Dr. Mkanda said, we have never uh, eradicated any other virus from this planet except smallpox almost 40 years ago. Uh, and sometimes, you know, we, <clears throat> we lose the relevance and importance of this, you know, uh, in the public uh, health sphere uh, because people don't really grasp the import of saying you eradicated a virus that has been plaguing humanity uh, for centuries. Because it means that you know, once uh, the world is certified polio-free, we will never need to immunize a child against you know, polio anymore. All the resources that we're expending, which is huge, uh, so far I think we've expended about 19 billion US dollars on, on, uh, worldwide on polio eradication around the world. This amount will be saved and can now be used for other kinds of health interventions. Uh, that is how momentous, you know, and very important, you know, this particular time it is. In northern, you know, Nigeria, of course, you know, we, uh, we were unable to reach children uh, between 2016, 2014 and 2016 uh, because of the insurgency. Uh, children were not accessible uh, to the campaign. And, of course, by the time, you know, the military was able to uh, get rid of, you know, the... Uh, uh, insurgents, you know, from most part of Bornu State, and children were able to access IDP camps. We picked up these four cases in 2016. And uh, the very, very robust outbreak response that was mounted, you know, by the government, Rotary, and, and our partners, WHO, uh, UNICEF, CDC, and the Gates Foundation, 
um, using a lot of innovative measures, you know, which, in, which included a lot of technology. Um, uh, the military played a very, very, you know, major role in this, in, in helping us to get to areas right. that otherwise would have been inaccessible because of insecurity. Uh, we've been able to put a lead on, on the outbreak in Borno State. Up till this moment, we have not seen uh, a single case of the wild polio virus. That led to the certification by the African Regional Certification Commission uh, barely a week ago. All right. So, uh, Dr. Mukanda, of course, we've heard about the measures Nigeria has put in place. But I want to take us back to 1996 uh, because the commitment to eradicate uh, the wild virus polio w w was uh, it came about because of a meeting by the heads of state in Yaoundé. I mean, at that time, polio was paralyzing about 75,000 children. Today, that has been eradicated. But many, of course, will be asking, why has it taken so long? I think it has taken so long because uh, in areas where we really battled with this, as was uh, said by uh, Dr. Tunji, we had issues of uh, people refusing uh, the vaccines, not believing that these vaccines uh, will work. I uh, also had issues of insecurity, not just in, a, uh, in Nigeria and the surrounding countries, but other countries as well. The other areas, the other issues that we have uh, weak health systems and as well as issues of logistics to ensure that we deliver the vaccines to where they're really required. So we had to improvise to find a way that we could reach uh, every last child which we had to reach. Uh, another complexity for the African region is population movements. So huge population movements, nomadic population movements, displacements because of these uh, wars, which means that people can carry the disease from one place to the other. So for example, when we had those refusals uh, in Nigeria, the disease wasn't just restricted to Nigeria, but it spread to another, for example, 20 more countries. So that means, again, doing a lot of activities to uh, stop the transmission, which has spread uh, quite a lot because of these population movements. So I would, I would take those four uh, issues as what have been most, most critical for us to delay uh, this work of finishing the job uh, in the African region. So we're looking at this, uh, Dr. Mkanda, from 1996, and we're saying um, uh, this has finally uh, come to fruition against the measures that you have put in place. But one will ask, uh, I mean, how is the continent going to keep this at bay? So it's very true. Uh, we still have, it's not a complete job uh, finished because, as we say in polio eradication, once we have uh, polio virus somewhere, that disease can move to the other uh, countries. Uh, we have observed this, uh, for example, in 2004, 2006, 2009, when we had outbreaks, uh, for example, happening in Angola, which were linked with the virus which was circulating uh, in India. So as you may know, we still have the two endemic countries, uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan, and this disease can be brought back uh, to the African uh, region. So there's still a threat. The thing which we need to do is we should have a very good surveillance system uh, in place so that we can detect any importation of this virus into the African continent very, very quickly so that we can respond to it. Uh, but what is also very critical is that we immunize our children. So we protect our children so that even if we have importation of this uh, virus into Africa, do not be able to cause a big outbreaks because the children are already uh, being uh, protected. But still the risk is there. That's why we need to continue with this work in terms of surveillance as well as uh, immunizing our children uh, to protect them uh, from both the white poliovirus but as well as from the security vaccine derived uh, poliviruses. Dr. Funzo, that is the question as well for Nigeria in terms of uh, the risks that are still there because the northern Nigeria, for instance, uh, still has an insurgency. So, what challenges are you facing now uh, in that area? And how are you going to ensure that the, the, there is sustainability with keeping the virus at bay? Well, I, I think like uh, Dr. You know, Pascal Mkanda has said, uh, it is very important for us you know, to continue uh, immunization, particularly routine immunization. We have used campaign as a stopgap uh, to breach you know, the level of uh, uh, immunization of children you know, who have been uh, adequately immunized against polio and the level we want to reach. So campaigns are just top gap. What we really need to do uh, is to uh, strengthen our primary healthcare system uh, such that you know, children can access routine immunization and get us to a level 
that even if the virus you know, finds its way into this country, uh, the children will not be infected. If we can get our coverage to 85, preferably you know, 90 percent, then the chances of children you know, uh, succumbing to the virus, even if it's reimported, becomes very slim. So it is very important uh, for us to actually focus you know, on primary health care. We had the Abuja Declaration uh, of uh, uh, African you know, uh, leaders uh, in uh, 2001 uh, to give priority to primary health care, you know, such that um, we reduce most of those disease burdens that the primary health care level can deal with. 85% you know, of our disease burden in, in, in Africa generally uh, can be you know, sorted out at the primary health care level. So it's a, it's a much better return on investment if we invest in the primary health care uh, system um, to ensure that you know, all vaccine preventable diseases, particularly in our case now, you know, polio, uh, is kept at bay even if uh, the rest of the world is not uh, totally free of the wild polio virus until such a time that the world is certified polio free. We need to ensure that uh, our children get their routine immunization as at when due. Right. Uh, Dr. Mukanda, just a quick uh, comment from you because there seems to be measures that uh, governments have put in place both at the regional uh, and the domestic level to keep the virus at bay. But um, let's just get from you and recommendations from your organization. The polio vaccine, is that a compulsory or an optional uh, you know, vaccine now for countries that wish to keep the virus at bay? Um, so what we recommend is the, va the vaccine to be given in all the countries. Uh, in fact, all the countries already have on their schedules for immunization the polio vaccine. So we're not removing the polio vaccine from that schedule. They need to continue uh, giving the children uh, the polio uh, vaccines, as I mentioned, to protect the children, continue, continue to protect the children uh, from these importations as well as from the uh, uh, circulating vaccine-derived uh, polio viruses. So we really do not want to lose all the gains. We do not want uh, the disease to come back. So what we're asking uh, uh, parents, uh, guardians, is to ensure that the children continue getting protected. Uh, all the other WHO regions, which uh, were certified uh, while polio virus free for some years now, they're still giving um, uh, vaccines against, against polio. So we're not going to stop now. It's time, I think, for us to continue protecting the children even further. All right, uh, gentlemen, we'll leave it there for the moment, but we are taking a short break. When we come back, we'll have more on how Africa eradicated wild, uh, wild polio. Stay with us. Life moves pretty fast. Ideas move at the speed of sound. Technology moves at the speed of light. If you don't filter out the noise, you might miss the details. We pay attention to the details because they matter. Showing you a different perspective. See the difference. Welcome back to Talk Africa. Let's continue our discussion. Still joining me in Lagos, Nigeria, Dr. Tunji Funzo, and joining me from Congo, Brazzaville, via Skype, is Dr. Pastor Mkanda, the World Health Organization Polio Eradication Program Coordinator for the Africa region. Dr. Tunji, you did mention um, earlier on the amount of money that is required, the amount of funding that is uh, required to assist the continent in fighting some of these um, diseases. The question, though, is, I mean, it is not just polio, though, because there are measles, there's TB, there's, uh, you know, malaria and so forth. Do African countries have the capacity now, though, to make uh, prevention a priority? I think it's, it's, it's a question of prioritizing. I think we have the resources within Africa. It's just mobilizing those resources. And, you know, as far as healthcare is concerned, I'm prioritizing them. Uh, uh, in areas, you know, where we, uh, like I said, you know, earlier, get much better return on our investment, which is, you know, primary health care. Yes, malaria uh, is still uh, uh, 
you know, killing about 400,000 uh, people in Africa every year. Uh, and that we can reduce, you know, drastically uh, if we take, you know, primary healthcare, pre you know, uh, preventive measures, you know, using insecticide uh, treated nets, you know, and uh, uh, treating uh, malaria as early as possible uh, in primary healthcare centers. I mean, that is why uh, the advocacy for uh, functional, accessible primary health care centers becomes very, very urgent because it is at that level we'll be able to nip, you know, in the bud, you know, some of these diseases that needlessly uh, lead to the loss of lives, you know, of, uh, of Africans. Um, so uh, we, we hope, you know, that um, we'll be able to continue to advocate for mobilization of resources to where it matters most in the healthcare sector, which is in the primary health care uh, sector. Dr. Mkanda, what are you seeing, though, in terms of mobilization efforts uh, by African countries to ensure that they have the capacity? I think we need to mobilize a lot of uh, resources in terms of uh, uh, funding. Uh, we need the governments to take uh, ownership and uh, leadership of all these uh, measures for us to succeed, just like we did succeed with, uh, uh, with polio. It was a very huge investment uh, with what polio viruses in terms of billions uh, of, of dollars. Uh, for us to get rid of this world polio uh, virus over time. Also, we need to mobilize uh, the communities. They also need to own the health of their own uh, populations. So every individual should be taking health uh, seriously. And I think if we have both the readership at the top, uh, steering this whole uh, movement or trying to eradicate diseases or stop the burden of diseases, and there is a very good buy-in uh, from the communities, we can succeed. Also, the issue of partnership. I think it's not an issue of just governments, uh, but also we can mobilize from partners, philanthropists, and others who are willing really to invest in this very good cause of really trying to reduce disease burdens in the African region. So it should be a partnership of both governments, NGOs, uh, private companies, as well as the communities uh, taking part in this cause. So I want to hear about your experiences, though, uh, both of you, and I'll start off with you, Dr. Pascal Bukanda, because I mean, as we've mentioned, there are uh, still challenges with uh, Africa's uh, public health systems. Which are the diseases uh, after eradication of polio? Which are the diseases that you still find are a major challenge for the African continent? What are the diseases that are still causing concern? So we can put them, I think, in two forms. The ones which are causing um, epidemics, um, uh, these are diseases like measles. Uh, we are talking of uh, diseases like uh, Ebola, uh, cholera. Uh, so those can have very high fatality uh, rates when they really attack uh, a population. But in addition to that, we also have other diseases which are a major burden. Uh, some of those you mentioned earlier already in the program. Uh, malaria is a big problem. Uh, HIV is a high burden. TB, those are high but in uh, diseases. Uh, for some of these, we already have uh, the, the vaccines. Some of those will have treatments uh, for these vaccines. So for example, you may have heard uh, people for some time now talking about measles elimination, uh, uh, people talking about malaria eradication. Uh, so what we have done, what we have learned from the polio program will be very, very critical in both fighting the infectious diseases, which I mentioned, as well as these high burden diseases, which I talked about. It's all about using uh, the information, the data, uh, really planning properly, and really having set goals, which are uh, really supported with a lot of funding uh, for us to finish even these diseases, which have been, even these diseases which people now are talking of elimination or even eradication. Uh, Dr. Funzo, there must be some experiences that uh, we have learned uh, clearly uh, from the eradication of uh, wild polio that could be used in um, eradicating or eliminating some of these other diseases. What were the experiences uh, that you found could be useful in assisting Africa's healthcare system? Uh, I, I think, you know, uh, as we were, you know, discussing earlier, uh, is to, uh, you know, uh, advocate you know, for governments, you know, to allocate more resources. I think one of the areas that Rotary International has been, you know, very, very effective in the partnership as far as polio eradication is concerned, you know, is our advocacy efforts, you know, through our members across the world uh, to the leadership, you know, of countries, you know, uh, 
across the world, particularly in Africa. Uh, Rotarians have had access you know, to the heads of states and their ministers of health over the last two, two and a half decades. To continue advocating for political will uh, to be exercised you know, for polio eradication, continuing to advocate for uh, the increase uh, in resources, allocations of the budget, you know, to healthcare, and particularly uh, since we're talking about polio eradication, you know, to our polio eradication efforts. And we have seen uh, some margin, marginal increase and improvement, you know, in the amount of resources that have been put, you know, to, uh, to healthcare. But we're still a far cry from what we want. But Rotarians will continue uh, to advocate to ensure that uh, the resources that are required are made available in the long term. Uh, Dr. Mkanda, your thoughts on that? Because there must be some experiences that you think could be useful in eliminating or eradicating the diseases that you've mentioned. For instance, uh, malaria, tuberculosis. Um, as I mentioned, first of all, it's something to do with uh, the leadership. But also on a technical um, uh, level, there are certain things which are very important. The polio program has been able to succeed because it's a very data-driven uh, program. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's uh, the polio program uh, emphasis uh, on data, I think, is unparalleled by other public health uh, programs. We have real-time data, which shows us where the disease is. And then we plan around that particular data, knowing which populations are at risk, and therefore putting interventions, uh, focusing on the areas where we know that, that, that this disease is circulating or is at risk. Uh, it's also an issue of mapping uh, exactly where the disease is, uh, is occurring. And the polio program has very good uh, mapping mechanisms. I mean, using satellite, GIS uh, systems, a lot of technologies, uh, which are very important. These also apply, for example, if you're having malaria, to know exactly where the circulation of malaria is occurring so that you can focus uh, your attention, you can focus your infrastructure uh, to those areas which you know that is uh, circulating uh, of the disease. We have also been um, lucky uh, that uh, we have uh, vaccines uh, which work against uh, polio. So if I talk about measles as well, there is a vaccine um, against um, uh, measles. So it's, it's a combination of, as I said, the political will, but as well as using the, the technology, the know-how, being data-driven, having a very good surveillance system for us to know whether what is happening to the disease trends uh, for us to achieve elimination or eradication of those diseases. So we are looking at 40 years after eradication of smallpox uh, and now the eradication of wild polio virus. Which one is next? <laughs> there has been discussion for some time, as you know, talking about uh, uh, measles elimination. Uh, we'll be making some progress uh, on that. Uh, Later, they've been talking of malaria uh, eradication. There's a global, uh, big global public health uh, movement uh, to ensure that even malaria uh, gets eradicated. Uh, but as I said, the, there'll be a lot to learn from what happened to the polio program. Uh, when we're really uh, escalating all, uh, our interventions to either eliminate or to eradicate uh, these diseases which I talked about. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for your insights. Well, that's all we have time for on this edition of Talk Africa. A big thank you to our panel in Lagos, Nigeria, Dr. Tunji Funjo the chair for the National Polio Plus Committee of Rotary International. And from Congo Brazzaville via Skype is Dr. Pascal Mukanda, the World Health Organization Polio Eradication Program Coordinator for the African region. Remember, we'd love to hear your feedback and do keep the conversation going online through our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. And do tune in again next week for more Talk Africa. For me, Beatrice Marshall, until next week, it's goodbye.